Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I am a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I want to talk about triggering and I want to discuss the fact that many people are trying to use various waveforms and pressure variations etc to uh, see what gets a reaction going and uh, just want to talk to you about the kind of input power waveforms that are being used um, and here we have a uh, uh, one of the options is to use a variac, which is a variable AC uh, transformer. And what this allows you to do is to take your AC from the mains and uh, through a series of uh, windings and positions on those windings, uh, vary the uh, plus and negative voltage effectively uh, of your AC waveform. So this would be, I don't know, maybe you had 110 volts peak to peak. Uh, uh, and uh, you know you're attenuating it here and here is, is the, the peak output. Um, the thing about this is that it's very symmetric uh, and so uh, your ups are as much as your downs and it's very smooth. Now one of the lecturers at uh, ICCF was uh, Vladimir Davinko and he was using research based off the work of uh, Vladimir Vysotsky and that is about coherent correlated states and you can do some research to find out what that is but essentially um, <clears throat> Vladimir said that uh, to get their reactors going based off uh, coherent correlated states theory um, uh, you needed a special waveform, and I uh, asked him in a number of ways what he meant by a special waveform. You know, what shape was it? Could he, you know, describe it? And maybe uh, I wasn't clear enough, but uh, I didn't get a clear answer. However, Vladimir was uh, talking later uh, in his own presentation, and he said there needed to be asymmetry. And so uh, there wasn't time at the end of his presentation to question him, but I caught up with him later and I asked him what he meant. Well, he meant it needed to be asymmetric. And uh, so, <clears throat> essentially, if we start with this, uh, the, there's a pulse width modulation, which is one of the common approaches to, to uh, uh, varying the power and trying to stimulate uh, the reaction. And here we have a, a pulse. It's a very high rate DIDT. And then the power's left on for a little while, and then it's turned off. And it's like a square uh, wave uh, of a certain duty cycle. Uh, however, um, Vladimir says that basically this will not work. And the reason is, is that when you have this uh, high DIDT, this is good. This makes our correlated, uh, coherent correlated state. However, when you come down the other side of the waveform, it destroys them. So effectively, you're not able to uh, see your exit effect because it's making and destroying the coherent correlated states according to his understanding. So the ways to get around this are to, uh, one is maybe to use DC and to vary the DC power. So uh, here you can see we have our DC and uh, 0 to 110 volts. And we're starting, we're raising the power, we're raising the power, uh, raising the power. And these are our non-asymmetric changes. So we have a fast DIDT and a flat line. And this can be going down again. So these are the kind of things with DC that you might have seen in Songsheng Jiang's work, Jiang's work, uh, or Yang's uh, work, that um, is asymmetric. And he saw some effect uh, in his uh, reactors. But moving on from that, there are ways that you could have dynamic waveforms. And, and that is to have uh, these kind of asymmetries where you, you have, uh, you know, from one voltage level, fast DIDT, and then you keep it flat and then slowly bring it down. Or another one where you kind of bring it up like this, and then you fast DIDT the other direction. He says it doesn't matter which way it goes, it's kind of like you just got to have it uh, not symmetrical. And this one here actually is like, if you can imagine, this is our AC waveform here and we're turning on at this point and it comes down here and crosses at zero. This is almost like a zero crossing uh, SCR at peak. But of course your maximum opportunity for uh, this effect 
is uh, only one pulse per cycle uh, when when it's at the peak of its uh, 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 cycle. Anything further down this end or down this end, the actual first DIDT will be dissimilar. Uh, sorry, not so significant rather. Okay, so that's some sample electrical waveforms. I'm sure you can come up with many others. Here, however, is uh, some other things to consider, and this is uh, about shock waves. So, for instance, if you have your loaded material, say titanium, some sort of titanium with deuterons, and then you smack it with a hammer, or you put it in liquid nitrogen, as we've discussed uh, in one of the Lender Live experiments uh, proposals. Here we've got nothing, then we hit it with a hammer, and you get this incredibly fast energy pulse to start with, and then there's a ring oscillation and dampening uh, in the material but effectively it's an asymmetric waveform uh, very fast on the initial uh, wave and then the ringing afterwards uh, similarly with light or pressure changes you can have a pressure drop like we did in GS 5.2 um, uh, or a laser pulse so a laser pulse might be like this and it's, it's like coming on and then it stays there for a period of time um, and then it comes off uh, uh, so, th these are things to think about uh, with dip different um, uh, triggering methods and using electricity, uh, phonons, or sound, and light or pressure changes. That's all I wanted to say, so uh, food for thought, uh, appreciate your comments, thank you very much.